So, good morning. Um, my name is Emlyn. I'm the director of Oliver Architecture um, and uh, obviously presenting for you guys in the sustainable architecture category this morning. Uh, the project uh, is located in Northcote and I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people as the traditional owners of the land that this um, project is sited on. Um, here we are in Northcote, it's such a beautiful sort of inner suburban area sandwiched between Mary Creek and the Arrow. Uh, our site is the one in the middle there essentially, that's California Bungalow, it's running east-west um, and that's the site now occupied by the building we designed and you can see the courtyard that's cut into it quite neatly facing north there. Um, when the client came to us back in late 2020, um, I just highlighted this particular aspect of their brief, which was that they had a preference for simple quality finishes, oversized or elaborate designs, and they were interested in incorporating sustainable design principles wherever possible. To that end, they really wanted to renovate rather than do a new build, and um, we started off with a feasibility process, and the plan up in the top left was a renovation, um, looking to get north facing light and um, use as much of the existing dwelling as possible. However, we found that it really just was not ticking the brief or making the best possible use of the site. Um, we also looked at an option that uh, was uh, cited to get as much north light as possible. But again, um, in reviewing that, we found that it wasn't really meeting the brief. Um, it wasn't connecting the family like they wanted to. So. We pursued the third option that we presented in a feasibility was a courtyard house option. In the very first sketch I did up in the top left, um, I was really influenced by Roy Grounds' courtyard house, um, but then soon shifted over to a courtyard that was sort of set off to the northern boundary, well not boundary, but to the northern edge of the building. And um, that was bringing in north light to the site. This is the plan that we presented at Feasibility and it really didn't change much through the following design process. So I'll just run you through it very briefly. Um, as I mentioned, it's uh, east-west with west to the left of the page. You enter, the living room is to the north there, courtyard in the middle, reading nook facing the courtyard. The stair eventually moved and is over that reading nook. Kitchen, dining and study. And then down on the south side we have services, kitchen, um, butler's pantry, laundry and mudroom. Small studio to the rear, upstairs a uh, landing slash rumpus room, couple of kids' bedrooms, bathroom and um, parents' quarters to the west there. Um, we're on an insulated concrete slab um, with a heat pump hydronic. There's recycled brickwork forming the predominant structure on the ground floor. CLT structure um, also on the ground floor, which then um, is joined up upstairs with a CLT stair. Then the entire first floor is constructed of CLT, including the roof. So why CLT? Um, this was designed during COVID essentially, and um, everyone was concerned about um, procurement of materials, about uh, supply chain issues, etc. We were worried about costs and everything. And I sort of, I think I'd actually seen a CLT presentation and I was interested in it. I gave Exlam a call and they said that their CLT product was not going to go up in cost anytime soon. Um, so it was really pragmatically driven, the use of CLT. Um, there was concern about how we actually build the thing because I'd never done it before. But um, in working with different consultants, subcontractors, etc., we, we thought it was a really good option for the job. So yeah, we dived into it, learnt all about it, um, was ticking off packing lists. Yeah, really didn't know what we were doing, but we worked it out. Um, and there's the truck loaded up and the CLT being craned into place. So the CLT, obviously, um, I'm not going to tell you guys about it. I'm sure you have some understanding of the product, but it's fantastic for its sustainable um, nature, you know, carbon sequestry, um, sequestration, I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the pine that's used is regenerative um, and it's minimising waste. Uh, time on site is reduced. Um, it's also just inherently, like, when the... CLT structure went up when this roof was on, it just felt so well sealed, even with no windows or anything. It was just amazing how much you were cocooned in here rather than seeing sticks of pine with sheeting over it. So it was just amazing for that. And now we've moved on to our second and probably third CLT project from this. 
um, just finding through the house a little. Um, as I mentioned already, along with the CLT, we've got recycled brick. The cladding is Akoya. Um, Akoya is great for its longevity and also sustainable um, features. Uh, there's all, we're completely off gas. I'm just going to run through the images as I talk a little bit more about sustainability aspects. There is a wood fire, um, but the heating is predominantly for from heat pump hydronic. Um, as I mentioned, completely off gas. Uh, there is air conditioning. There's an HRV system, and we did do a blower door test. We didn't meet passive house standards, so I, I can't actually remember. I tried to dig it up this morning, but we were just under one um, air change per hour, so it wasn't quite at that 0 0.6 that you need for passive house. But it performs incredibly well. Um, I would say particularly during winter, I'm not going to lie, that there's probably a little bit too much sun on the um, windows up the top of the courtyard, but we're really hoping that this tree grows up and really shades that area. So for the moment, um, it's something that the clients are working with. Um, that's Tom Ross's kid Lenny there. Um, yeah, the CLT, so all materials are champ, like all the structures champion. I think that's a really sustainable aspect of the project. We're not, um, there's nothing thrown on for the sake of fancy or decoration or anything. The structure is a structure and everything else there's no added, we've minimised plaster, we've minimised tiles, there's carpet on the floor, but you know, we're, there's no, there's minimal waste here. Um, that's within the courtyard. So this north, this north facing screen was both for privacy and to help protect those windows um, within the courtyard. Um, that's upstairs in the master bedroom facing west. So the west facing windows both have operable blinds over them. On the outside? On the outside, yeah. Um, and yet yeah, they're really happy there. They are such lovely clients that, you know, going on this sort of sustainable journey with them has been fantastic. It was also cost effective. So I'd just say as a sustainable project, you know, I work a lot in residential. Um, we're not all going to get to passive house tomorrow. We're not all going to be able to do absolutely every measure that would be advocated for a perfectly sustainable house. But I think this is a good step in the right direction. And it's a model that I'm now pursuing on multiple projects. Yeah. Awesome. yeah.